Awesome. So we're going to have a great service today. We're doing a sermon series called Prayer That Works. Prayer that, the prayer, the, a prayer of confession works. In fact, in the next week or two, that is the, that's the sermon that, that's going to be about, about a prayer of confession and what that means and how we do repentance. But prayers that work, and, and today, I know last week Danielle nailed it. She was talking about prayers of suffering and people have gone through suffering and, and what, how we approach God in prayer of suffering or prayer while we're suffering. But today we're talking about a different type of prayer. And I'm going to jump in right away. What, what motivates you to pray? So in Slack, I'd love to hear from you. What motivates you to pray? Or if you're a person that is really, really solid at praying, you're, you find prayer easy, then I want you to just list a couple things that motivate you. Why are you motivated to pray? Now, there are other people in the room that, that aren't like that at all. If you're a person that you find prayer intimidating or hard, you, you go, I know I should pray, but I never think about it until I'm at church, and then I feel guilty that I didn't pray enough, and oh my goodness, what's going on? What, what motivates you? What might motivate you to pray? Where, where's that coming from? Um, while we do that, um, I am going to, I'm going to read our text. It's a full psalm today. And, uh, and we're going to walk through this psalm as a practical practice of a prayer that works. And, uh, and you'll see how that works. We're going uh, to use Slack for this. Um, but while you're answering the question, what motivates you to pray, hear the word of the Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust. In you, I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let my, not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. Remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his testimony. His covenants and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it's great. We just did that, right? We just, we just prayed about aligning with God and asking God for forgiveness. Pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. I love that line. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. Just a great juxtaposition of two words that we don't really put together very often. My eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. He will turn to me and be gracious to me, for I'm lonely and afflicted. Anybody ever felt lonely and afflicted? The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble. Forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes and with what violent hatred they hate me. Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me for you, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O oh God, out of all of his troubles. Okay, so while I'm reading that scripture, Slack is lighting up on fire, and, uh, and I'm seeing all of these motivations for why God, why, why, you, why you, what motivates you to pray. So uh, times of spiritual, uh, times of significant blessing and significant pain motivate me to pray. So the feelings of extremes. Yeah, need. Need motivates me. My emotions motivate me. Um, fear, desire for peace, love. Love motivates me to pray. Love for our Savior, gratitude for his sacrifice. Love motivates me to pray. So good. I need to pray to connect with God in order to have strength. 
prayer requests, awe of his creation, gratitude, family disasters, ministry opportunities, financial challenges. So many reasons that motivate us to pray, yet so many of us struggle with prayer that actually works. We struggle with with prayer that works. We struggle saying, okay, so how am I supposed to pray in a way that's effective? Sometimes we think that prayer is, is like this prayer lottery where it's like, you know, you throw up your hopes and dreams. You throw up your, your best wishes. And we go, okay, God, I, I hope this works. And we just toss it out there. And we hope that somehow the deity in the sky somehow touches what we thought of. And then we feel so insignificant. Has anybody ever been in a room where you're praying and you literally feel like your, your prayers bounce off of the ceiling? Has anybody ever else ever had that experience? Because I've totally had that experience. Yeah, okay, one of you. Thank you for being honest. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So when you're praying in a room and you're like, is God even hearing me? Sometimes, sometimes we want to pray and, and we've got these needs. We've got an agenda on our mind and we're, and we're trying to win the lottery. You get a one in a million chance that God's actually going to answer your prayer and you're just like, well, I hope so. See, the prayer that works today that we just read in Psalm 25 is not one of those prayers. It's not a praying to win the lottery prayer. The prayer that we read in Psalm 25 is of a different substance. It's a prayer to seek to know God more. A prayer to seek to know God more, and I want to lead you in this prayer today. And so you can take out your phones for this because this is going to be a full service phone interaction. I'm not going to have Slack questions, but you're going to use Slack in a different way today. Today I'm going to lead you in a prayer to seek to know God better. There's going to be seven stages of this prayer, and each stage you're going to write in Slack. You have two places that you could write, you choose. One is in general. At the end of the sermon, you hit enter, and your prayer will show up, and the whole congregation can see it. The other one is just a private DM. You can actually DM yourself or DM me, and you can build this prayer throughout the sermon, and then you hit enter at the end. Okay? This whole sermon is one prayer from you to God. That's what we're doing today. If you don't have Slack, then you can use your phone and you can use your notes app, and that would be fine as well. So let's go at it. Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, no one who... Wait for you will be put to shame. They will be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. There's a posture that we set. This is the first step, and this is what I'm going to have you guys do in a minute. There's a posture that we set when we, when we approach a prayer to know God more, and we actually start off with a posture of trust. This is actually the beginning parts of it. I am willing to trust God. This is the beginning step. If you aren't willing to put your trust in God, then how can you allow God to reveal himself to you? So you might struggle with it because this guy struggles with it too, right? Oh, God, I put my trust in you. Okay, don't let me be put to shame, please. Right? There's a, there's a hesitation here. It's not like a, a blind trust, like, oh, I, I trust God, and, and no, nothing is ever going to shake that. No, no, no. He's like, I trust God. Don't make me look like an idiot, please, God. Anybody ever been in that moment where you're just like, I trust God, but oh, man, God might be making me look like an idiot, right? Don't make me look like an idiot is the local idiom for don't, don't let me be put to shame. Don't make me look like an idiot, God. I trust you. And so what we're going to do today, your first sentence in this, your first sentence in this is going to be a sentence in a couple words, your own words. You can write in Slack how you want to say, God, I trust you. You set your posture towards God as one of the trusting person. And so you can choose your own words for that. How do you want to express your 
trust in God. If you're struggling with trusting God, then you say, God, I want to trust you. Teach me about your, God, I want to trust you. Next verse is like this. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. You're the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. The second step is to start to explore who God is by asking or, or by simply saying, you know, teach me. It's, it's, the, it's the step of prayer that works. It's, it's I'm trusting God, and now I'm going to humbly seek his ways. This comes back to our prayer of confession that we just did where we, where we turn our eyes to Jesus and we say, Jesus, teach me your way. Teach me your way. And so your sentences in Slack look like this. They, they start to say, they start to explore who God is. When, when I started praying regularly, I was 16 years old, and I started prayer journaling. This is actually why I'm getting you to write, because it's actually a very effective tool. Oftentimes, we think you have to pray fluently, just like out your mouth. That's actually not as effective as when you write, because when you write, your thoughts have to slow down. Teach me your way, O oh God. And even as you're writing it, start thinking about the ways of God that you want to explore. Effective prayer starts with the desire to know God, to know who God is. Ineffective prayer, I'm just going to bounce this out for a moment. Ineffective prayer starts with a desire that's centered around me, my own will. That's what ineffective prayer starts with. Effective prayer starts with what is God like? Who is God? What is this like? Keeping a prayer journal is a great idea. I see somebody on Slack talking about how they've done that. See how God has worked in your life. So in this sentence, you're going to, you're going to type in words that remind you of who God is. God, you're loving, or God, you're merciful. Statements that will help your heart and your mind set your posture towards God. We're still in that first section of trust, humility. God, we want to know you. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love as we move on. For they have been of old. Remember not the sin of my youth or my transgression. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. So in this step, we're going to we're going to express why God is greater than us in humility. Your steadfast love from old. God, you are greater than us. See, humility toward God runs through all effective prayer. Consider why you're praying. You're praying because God is more capable and larger than you are. You're exploring God. You have a request that you want to bring to God, but first you want to know God's heart. Because he gave you the opportunity to know his heart. See, God is greater than you in every way. In every way, God is greater than you. And so effective prayer seeks out God. And says, God, in humility, the words that you write here are a reflection of your heart. What makes you know God's more important and powerful and greater than you? In your prayer, start typing, what makes you know that God is greater than you? How do you know that? What is it about God? This can start to look like praises. It can also acknowledge your own lack in comparison to God. You might be like, God, you are far greater than me. You are, you are wonderful. You are awesome. This next section will have us reflect on God's authority. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimony. For your sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt for it's great. God has the authority to lead. He has the authority to teach. He has the authority to set paths. He has the authority to pardon your guilt. 
How does God have authority in the area that you're thinking about, in the desire to know God? How does God have authority in the world around you? What does this make you think of? What's going on as you reflect on God? Reflect on his authority. Write that in your prayer. God, you are so powerful. Imagine how God's authority has acted in the past. Look for the precedence of God's actions in the past. Now this one's interesting and fun. As we continue on in our prayer building. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the ways he should choose. His soul, his soul shall take... Uh, shall abide in well-being. His offspring will inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. Now, what is he doing? What's going on here? Why did he just all of a sudden go off on this? He's starting to reflect on a person, not on God. What's happening? Well, what he's doing is he's telling God how God has acted in the past. He's, he's recalling the things of God. God, you've acted like this in the past. Your friendship with people who fear you, you make no in his covenant, your covenant, we start to reflect on what God has done. Why? Look, if I want, if I, if, if my ultimate plea to God is I, is I do want somebody to be healed, I start off posturing myself before God. God, I trust you. God, I want to, I want to be humble in front of you. I want to I want to learn from you. I want to know what you're like. I want to know what you want to see happen. And I'm getting to this healing part prayer. Let's take that as an example. Now I'm going to tell God how he has acted. God, I know that you have healed the sick. I know that you have done this. If your prayer is about provision, I know God you have done great things. If your prayer is about just about knowing God, which is great, this is a huge prayer that works, God, I know you have revealed yourself. You have done this work. And so we reflect on what God has done in similar situations to mine. The reverent fear of God places me again in his servant. Isn't that what prayer is about? Prayer isn't about getting what I want from God. Prayer is about humbling myself in my situation and learning about God's ways. It's about us dictating, literally saying out loud, um, we, we, we're, we're dictating, God, I want to know you. We're saying it out loud. We're putting that out. We're saying this is what we believe. We want you more than anything. And this is where prayer starts to turn a corner from just asking for things. This is when we actually start to build a relational prayer. God, I want to know you. God, this is what you've done in the past. God, you are wonderful. And now we move into the heart of the request. This is where we submit a humble plea that takes into account all the previous sentences. Everything you've just said about who God is, now we, have, we adjust our, our plea. And so the psalmist says this, My eyes are ever for the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Now here we get the plea. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I'm lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive my sins. He's got multiple requests going on here. These are heart pleas. God, this is what I want from you to do. All these people, they hate me. God, I want you to do something here. And now after I've positioned myself humbly in front of God, now with confidence I can come to God and say, God, do something. Fix this. Be involved in this. Show me who you are. This is what the psalmist does. It isn't a formula that he, that, that he was following. He created this, and it happens to be something that I can teach off of. Prayers don't have to look like this, but, but they do follow this trend. Put myself humbly in front of God. Trust Him. Look to Him. Explore what He's done in the past. Now I'm ready to express my plea. Because guess what? When my plea starts off wanting a PlayStation 5, all of a sudden, by the time I'm at that point in my prayer, the PlayStation 5 doesn't matter as much, does it? 
all of a sudden, after I've gone through this whole thing of God, teach me who you are, now my petty little prayer that actually was about my own selfish desire falls apart, and my real heartfelt prayer, God, fix this world because it's damaged and it's broken and people need to see you. My heartfelt prayer becomes, God, do something in Bradford because this matters more than my own comfort and my own sense of well-being. God, I need you to move in this situation. Because I can't do it. Man, if I'm praying for something that I can do, go do it. Your vision for what God wants to do can be so much larger than what you can do. Your vision for what God wants to do can be so much larger than what God wants to do. God, do it. God is gracious to the afflicted. He's forgiving. He cares about his name and his reputation. And therefore, since I also care about that, God, don't let me be put to shame. So here's where we go. Submit a humble plea in Slack. Submit a humble plea. What do you actually want God to do? What do you actually want God to do? We've gotten through some of the work. What do you actually want? The God of the universe, what do you care that he does? There are situations in your family God cares about deeply. What do you actually care he does in your family? There are needs that you carry or that others carry. What do you actually want God to do? We end a prayer after pouring out our heart to God. We end a prayer with this. May integrity and uprightness preserve me. I wait for you. Redeem Israel out of all of his troubles. After pouring out our heart, after saying, God, here's, here's who you are. I want to know you. I want to understand you. I want to I I be guided by you. Then we pour out our heart with our real requests. And we're vulnerable in front of God, and we let God have it. And we end with a commitment to wait. Man, I don't know about you, but I like it when God moves fast. I like McDonald's, God. But the more I've followed him, one of my mentors, Brent Diaz, said to me when I was just starting in ministry, and I've said it again and again and again, and I'll keep on saying it. If God is in something, it's going to take longer than you wanted it to. His work, he's got all the time in the world. He is patient. But we shouldn't consider that to be slowness, like like, like God's not faithful. But he is patient And we commit to wait patiently. We know, as someone just wrote on Slack, that that God has already come the world. Help me to have patience to wait for its completion. And now if you've been tracking this whole way with all the different messages, I I love what I'm seeing in here. God, help me to see how you're working. Allow me to work with you to accomplish your purposes. I love that. God, thank you for your grace. Somebody wrote out Job 20, 23, one to, or 2 to 17, which is a great passage. I, I love this. Thank you, Lord, for orchestrating all things. You know my path, and I trust you. I know that if I knew the whole story, I wouldn't be able to handle it. So thank you for being with me day to day. What a beautiful prayer. I am flawed, and God is perfect. God is forgiving, and I have so much to learn. Beautiful prayers. You can hit enter on your, on your prayer as a big amen. And God sees and hears these. If they went to a direct message to you, God, God knows them. If they went to a direct message to me, thank you. I'll, I'll pray them with you. If they went into general, what a, great, what a great encouragement to everybody. But let me pray for us in closing. God, you hear and read our prayers. 
we humbly come to you and we acknowledge that you are in every way greater than us. We thank you that you have not given up on us as evidenced by the fact that you're still here. God, teach us your way, Lord Jesus. Teach us how you want us to act and respond so that we can be more like you. Teach us, teach us to be transformed. God, we don't want to just be a, a social group of people that just try our best and kick the can down the road and hope for the best. We want to be people who are directed by the living and powerful person of the Holy Spirit, understood in the person of Jesus. We want to walk with that power, Jesus. We want to walk with that strength. We want to see you at, at, at work in our lives. So here our prayer. We want to know you more. We want to know what you're doing. We want to know how that looks like. And God, I pray that we would be a patient people, observant, careful listening to what you are doing so that when we see it, we get to join in. And we get to join you in the greatest victory known to all humanity, the victory of God redeeming a lost people. Jesus, I pray that every person here would be blessed and that we would know your presence and know your person more. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being part of our church. I've seen a bunch of people uploading their prayers and it's just so good. And uh, I encourage you to come back next week as we continue talking through prayers that work. God bless you.